Boys, if you don't know how the game of poker works, well then today is your lucky day. Poker is a game of chance as well as skill. And I'm in a poker tournament versus eight other streamers. This game is called Texas Hold'em. It's a variant of poker. There are many variants of poker, you know? It's like playing, uh, okay, well, let me just give you a background. Let me just give you a background of my poker history. I learned poker when I was in the sixth grade because at lunchtime we would play poker for our lunch. And I would bet my lunch and I would oftentimes go hungry and my friend Jake was an absolute menace at poker He would take me for all I'm worth and put my lunch in his locker room at the end of the year We checked he had an entire locker full of moldy food. He was the Jeff Bezos of the group He only accumulated wealth. He would never use it started in the sixth grade when I would bet lunch money with Jake, but it did not end there. I played poker almost every other weekend, maybe monthly, with my friends. Yeah, um, I'm out. <clears throat> I'm in. Me too. Me too. All right, what do you got? They're giving me dog shit! At my friend's house with his dad when I was like, like 16, 17. And the way I played poker was very fast, very loose, very stupid. A lot of bluffs, a lot of all-ins, a lot of, hey, I'm kind of bored of playing poker. Let me just go ahead and make something really big happen and put a lot of chips in the pot because it was fun. Which is how most people start when they play poker. It's it's kind of how it goes. And then I entered college. And, you know, I, I didn't really play too much poker at the start. But I came back for winter break one year in college. And I met up with my friend's dad. We'll call him Don. So I met up with Don. And he was like, hey, Ludwig, how's it going? I was like, it's going good. And he's like, you still playing poker? And I'm like, well, not as much. Not as much. Because, you know, most of the friends I had made in college don't really know how to play. And if you don't know how to play poker, it's not very fun. And he's like, oh, yeah, I get that. I get that. Well, hey, I'm in this online poker group if you want to ever join up. And I was like, huh, okay, sure. So he invites me to this Facebook group, which was basically a collection of, like, middle-aged men who, through various work connections or friend connections had created this online group and it was ran by two guys. We'll just call them Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark ran these poker tournaments online and all the guys would play in it. And I played almost every day because they had, they had games like every day, every other day. I played every day there was a game available during winter break on my MacBook Pro because I, I had worked at Apple. I had a MacBook Pro. So I was playing on my MacBook Pro and it was real money. It was real money. So, you know, $20 buy-in, $50 buy-in, occasionally $100 buy-in. I played, I played, I played, and I lost, I lost, I lost. I ended up at the end of winter break down about, I would say, $2,000. Bear in mind, I had been working at Apple just saving my money, and I lost pretty much all of it. I had to pay all of the, you know, my savings as my buy-ins. I was broke. I was super broke. And after winter break, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not cut out for poker. I cannot win. So I played much less, but I still watched poker because I really liked the game. And at that time, it was kind of the golden era of poker on Twitch. Poker on Twitch, kind of dead nowadays. Doesn't really exist. But back then, it was big, right? You had people like Jay Carver, who would be like an easy 10k Andy every time he'd be playing random high stakes games. You had a, a house of upcoming players. You had like Kevin Martin, uh, Jamie Staples, his brother Matt, all these guys who were like brand new to poker and learning the game. And I, I would watch, I would watch them, especially Kevin, like almost every night. There was Lex, of course, who's still around, Tonka P, who's maybe known for his blackjack clips on, on YouTube. But uh, anyway, there's just a bunch of creators, like just so many creators who were so good at poker that I would just consume the content of. I watched pretty much every Poker After Dark highlight, every Tom Dwan moment that you could find on the internet, you know, all the shit that you watch when you first get into poker. And I started to learn a bit. I started to learn a bit. But I still wasn't really making much money because at the end of the day, you have to know there exists a thing on poker sites called a rake. A rake is basically a way for the house who's running the tournament to make money. If you've ever read or watched the movie Molly's Game, you'll know that Molly, a person who ran tournaments for big celebrities in Hollywood, eventually ended up taking a rake in these games, which is illegal. It's not illegal to run a game. That's fine. That's fine. You can have people go to your house and play poker. That's fine. But to have people play a game and then take money, you are operating an illegal gambling ring. 
need a license. It's usually not legal. You need to have some Native American land. I don't know. It's all weird and, and very hard to do. Molly's Game is a really good movie, by the way. But anyway, the guys who are running this were taking a rake. So it costs like $20 to enter the tournament. Everybody puts in their $20. There'd be like 30 guys in it. So there's like 600 up for grabs, but everybody has to put an extra $2 and that's the rank, a 10% rank because it was a tournament format. Rather than like a cash game where you put in money, you can leave at any point. It was basically, you only got paid if you were in the top three. And so not only would I uh, lose the money for losing the tournament or not getting top three, I would lose the money for also paying the rank. But eventually I noticed that they stopped running games. Lewis and Clark ran at peak a game every day. And then it was like every other day, every three days, every five days, every week, maybe even missing a week here or there. They were running almost no games. And I was like, what is up with this? And I hit him up. I'm like, yo, Lewis, you're not running a lot of games. He's like, yeah, you know how it is. Just busy with work and the family. The guy was an accountant. If you don't know, accountants are like really hardworking people for six months of the year. And it is the moment tax season rolls around. I don't exactly know tax day because I... <laughs> but sometime in April, apparently people need to pay money to the government. And that's when accountants really have to get to work. And so he couldn't run as many games. And I was like, oh, that's a shame. Well, a few days after that, he hits me up. He's like, hey, Ludwig, you're in almost every one of our games. And you're like a really free time guy because you're a college student. Do you want to help run some games? We will give you 50% of the rake for any game you run. And we will let you enter one game for free every week. You can come up with all the games, how much money it is, advertise it, all that stuff. This is the arrangement. So basically... He got 50% for free. All he had to do was just have the connections of the Facebook people. So I was like, yeah, you know, it's a pretty good deal for me. It's a pretty good deal for you. Let's do it. So I do it. I eventually start running some games. And you know, at first the site had kind of died out a bit. So we had maybe like, you know, in general, a table of poker caps out at nine people. That's usually the most you'll ever want. We barely filled up a table at the start. I mean, maybe seven, maybe eight people. There was like 60-ish people in the table, but barely had many people on the on the actual server and i was like damn this is a problem you know so i'd be running these games and almost no one would be in them so i was like how do i fix this problem i decided to come up with basically the same marketing strategy that made uber so big at the start a referral program you know you bring somebody in i will let you enter one game free which was kind of a big loss at the start but if you're bringing one person in then usually that will cover the costs. It kind of worked itself out and the site slowly grew. And we went from running like two games a week with eight, nine people to running literally one game or maybe back-to-back -back games every single night. I would have to leave anytime I was hanging out with somebody at like 6.30 sharp to go run my 7 p.m. Uh, poker tournament with all of the boomer old men. And I started jacking up the stakes too. Back in the day, it was like $20 plus $2 rake. And I was like, well, I get more money if the rake's higher and they'll be more excited if the tournament's higher. So I was like, let me just run some like $50 tournaments. Let me run some $75 tournaments. Then I got thinking, let me run like a, like a Ranbat system. Let me run a system where, hey, if you enter enough, you can do a point system and then we'll do like a $1,000 tournament at the end of the month that you get to enter free. And then I started adding some like 100, 150, $200 tournaments. And this all got really, really high stakes. And all while this was happening, you have to bear in mind, I was also able to enter one tournament a week for free, but I was able to pick the tournaments. And I also ran the tournaments. So I would sneak in like a $200 entry tournament. I would enter completely free. And then it didn't matter if I got last place. I was basically free rolled. And so I would just continue on playing. I ended up absolutely crushing. I went from the worst player on the site down 2K to the best player on the site. And this is not just based on the amount of money taken in because I also got some from Rake. I won. There was a leaderboard that showed how many firsts, seconds, and thirds. And there was this absolute goaded player. We'll call him Tom like Brady, who was the first, he was the king for like the seven, eight months I was on. He was just the absolute God. I overtook him. 
Part of it was because of how many games I won, but my win percentage also caught up to him, which was really difficult to do because of how low my win percentage actually was when I first started. I ended up making probably about, I would say, two to three thousand dollars a month playing poker, running these games. And it was super time consuming because I, it, was, it was pretty much my life at that point. I mean, every single night I would be doing all the tournaments, running them all. I'd have to deal with payouts. I had to have spreadsheets. I had to get the, the money from the guys. I was doing all of that while also being a college student, while also working at Apple in the daytime. And so eventually, you know, I, you know, graduation was coming up and I was just a little too busy and I stepped away from it. And I'm pretty sure since then, the poker site kind of died. Um, I stopped just sending Lewis thousands of dollars every month without him doing any work. And then he realized that I had kind of left and didn't really pick up the ball in time. So I think at this point, the site's dead, but for a while, it is true, I did run an illegal online gambling ring. It was Pog. Oh, sorry. It was Komodo Hype. What if the SBI is listening? I also murdered someone. And now they don't know which is true. Five head. Now they don't know whether I am lying about the murder or the poker. And then they're going to be like, we're too overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.